What's up, CFO gang? It's your boy, Jay Tuck. Real Cowboys fans stand up. And when I was going on vacation, I asked you, CFO gang, what types of videos do you want to see me make? Right. And you know, I got a long list, man. Y'all going to put me to work. But there's a lot of questions that you guys want to be addressed. And I want to make sure I'm addressing all of them content wise. But I got this one. Now, the first half of this question, I ain't got no answers. Well, he says, why is CD not paid? I don't know. I ain't got the answers. I don't know. Your, your guess is as good as mine. Right. But the back half of this question really stood out and kind of impacted me to make this video, inspired me to make this video. He says, film on what teams are doing to slow Micah down later in the year. And I feel like when it comes to Micah Parsons, he has been the hot topic button all offseason. Now, why? I do not know, right? But it seems to be this narrative that Micah Parsons fades at the end of the season. So I really want to see if there's some truth and validity to this statement. So I had to roll up my sleeves. And to be honest, I could not do this alone. I had to go deep into the analytics, right? And I was able to get access to an NFL system that people like me, us little content creators, aren't supposed to have, right? This is what all 32 NFL teams use to get their analytics and get their foundations, right? So I was like, let me see if I can get access, right? And sometimes your boy Jay Tuck just happens to... So I was able to get access to do this film. So, you know, it just is what it is. But... When you look at the analytics, not the emotion, not the self-promotion, right? Not the lazy narratives, but the analytics and the film, I want to find, is there really a contextual conversation to Micah Parsons falling off at the end of the season? So let's go ahead and get into the stats. So when we look at the first nine games versus the last nine games, Sacks, sacks, sacks is what everyone seems to talk about. The fantasy football stats, you're only measured as a defensive lineman or a defensive edge rusher based off of your sacks. Well, Micah Parsons, the leader, right, of our defense, had 14 sacks. He had seven and a half sacks the first nine games and six and a half the last nine. Man, he fell, he fell off a cliff. Micah, what do you do? Too much podcast, and he was a whole sack short. He was a whole sack short because of all that podcasting. Now, the narratives make it seem like he had nine, right, the first nine, and had two. That's not the case. That's a case with another player that we'll talk about, but it wasn't the case with Micah Parsons, so only one sack short, right? Pressures. I'm sure we'll all agree that getting pressure on the quarterback in a passing league is very important. Well, his pressures actually increased. He had 54 pressures on the back half of the season compared to 49, right? All right, well, we don't care about that. We don't care about pressures and doing all that, right? How many total tackles did he get? Well, if you look at the analytics, not let's listen to Jay Tuck or listen to a radio guy or a podcaster, just look off the numbers. He actually had more total tackles the back half of the season. So one sack short, more pressure, and more tackles based off of just the numbers. Now, tackles for losses. This is a very important stat. Now, I want you guys to start talking about this a lot more because a lot of people just focus on sacks, right? But sacks and tackles for losses, they equal almost the same thing. It's just not the quarterback, right? So we had 10 tackle for losses on the first half and only eight on the back half, fell off, fell off a cliff, right? Quarterback hits, hitting the quarterback, right? Making them feel you off the edge is another important stat, especially for an edge rusher. Well, 17 quarterback hits the front nine, 16 the back nine. So if you look at things, things look awfully close when you compare Micah Parsons' numbers to the front half of the season to the back half of the season. So this fall off thing, not sure if there's any concrete evidence when it comes to that. Now, total snaps. This was a drastic increase. He had 377 total snaps, the first nine, and 441 snaps, the back nine. Now, I was like, why did we increase? How did it increase? Well, there was something crazy that happened, right? Dan Quinn gave Micah a high, high snap rate versus the Washington Commanders. What the hell? Dan Quinn, bro, what, what was you doing 
playing Micah Parsons, 62 snaps versus the Commanders. And he also had 64 snaps versus Detroit when his season average was 48.1. So for some reason versus the Commanders, Micah got a lot of reps. You know what I'm saying? So I think that that can go into play. Like, hey, you're wearing down for taking your player by giving him all these damn snaps in a meaningless game versus Commanders. Now, Detroit, we need it because we were screwing up. But the Commanders in Washington, you could have let a lot of other people get those opportunities. Now, here's the hot topic button. Linebacker. Has he played inside linebacker? Playing outside linebacker? It is what it is. We'll see how Coach Zimmer uses him in our new defense and our new scheme. But 47 inside linebacker snaps compared to 56. But y'all want to focus on the run game. How many run defensive snaps did he have? 150 on the first nine, 178 on the back nine. So if you look at the numbers, don't look at me. I mean, if you want to look at me, the numbers are very similar. The numbers are very similar when you compare and contrast what Micah Parsons did the front half of the season versus the back half of the season. Well, Tuck, I don't give a damn about that. I don't give a damn about that, Tuck. I want Micah Parsons to be more like TJ Watt. I want Micah Parsons to be more like Max Crosby, right? I want Micah Parsons to compete like Miles Garrett, the defensive player of the year. That's the standard that we're holding Micah Parsons to. Hold up, wait. So I was able to pull some analytics and thanks for this alley-oop from a good friend of mine. He tossed it up, I slammed it down. Now, these are based off of PFF stats. PFF typically rounds up, so you had half a sack, they kind of the sack, right? But if you look at the second half of the season, the last nine games, Micah Parsons had eight sacks, 54 pressures. The defensive player of the year. He only had one sack last six games. Miles Garrett, five sacks, 47 pressures, right? TJ Watt, 10 sacks, 47 pressures. Max Crosby, five sacks, 41 pressures. 10 sacks from Bosa. You know what I'm saying? I'm sick of Bosa, but it's, it's with it. 10 sacks, 51 pressures, right? So if you look at everything from TJ Watt to Nick Bosa, Micah Parsons is really just two sacks short. And I posted the stat yesterday showing that he was the most double team defensive end in all of football. Over all of these people. Micah Parsons was double teamed the most. I think it was at 167. But Micah said it had to be a lot more than that. It felt like 200 or something. You know what I'm saying? So he was the most double team defensive tackle, or sorry, defensive end in all of football and was still able to produce the back half of the season, right? Well, now it's like, you know what, Tuck? That's regular season, though. That's regular season, though. I don't give a damn about no regular season stats, bro. What are you doing in the playoffs? That's when the real the real players step up in the playoffs, which I agree. So I want to take a look. I took a little gander, right? What are some of these guys doing in the playoffs? Now, to be honest with you, it was hard. It was hard to find this stat, y'all. Like, I had to really roll up my sleeves because three of these people wasn't even in the playoffs last year. They wasn't. There was nowhere to be found. They was at home with us. But... I want to pull up the stats to make a fair argument. So let's look at Miles Gear, Defensive Player of the Year. Don't take this out on me, Miles. This ain't got nothing to do with me on week one. This ain't got nothing to do with me on week one. But Miles Gear has five solo tackles, one assist, and one sack in three games in his playoff career, which started before Micah Parsons. Okay, cool. Miles Gear, Defensive Player of the Year. Right? That's that's the model. That's the model, right? That you want to model Micah Parsons after. Well, no, no, no. TJ Watt, right? Because I wanted TJ Watt in the draft over Taco. That's the guy we should model Micah Parsons after. Well, if you look at TJ Watt, six solo tackles, two assists, one sack, and one fumble recovery in three games in his playoff career. So don't let these lazy narratives that these players have been balling out of their mind when it comes to playoffs. Now, Nick Bosa is a little bit different, but Nick Bosa has gotten a lot of opportunity. He's got like 12 to 13 games in the playoffs, right? So, yeah, you can get consistency. Your number's only going to, going to be there, right? Nick Bosa's a little different animal. But what I want you guys to really understand is when you look at the numbers and you take the feelings, right? You take the feelings, context, add it. Take the feelings out, add the context, add the analytics, add the film. Micah Parsons really hasn't 
falling off at the end of the season like a lot of people want you to believe. I mean, I'm not a PFF grade guy, but if you are and you like colorful charts, his actual defensive grades were actually higher with an average of 79.4% the back half of the season versus 70 at the front half. So whether how you slice and dice it, Micah Parsons has performed pretty much equally throughout the entirety of last year. So this whole fall off narrative, I don't see where it's coming from. I think you're looking at the wrong place, looking for love in all the wrong places. I think the main question that we need to ask is, why is Micah Parsons struggling versus better opponents, right? We know what Buffalo did. They just came out and ran the ball and didn't throw, right? But with San Francisco, you had that game. He balled out versus Philly. Typically balls out versus Philly. And Detroit, he had a good game as well, right? So San Francisco, and I would say, you know, Buffalo, you know, they're kind of ant games. But it's not that big of a difference if you have two games when you're not fully disrupting, right? And I think that's the problem. We'll see him go crazy, right? We will see Micah Parsons go absolutely crazy and feel like he has to do that two and a half sacks, three sack games versus everybody, right? Versus everybody. And that's just not sustainable. You're going to have hot games. You're going to have a decent game. You're going to have some cold games, right? But I think if we want anywhere to improve is how does he combat versus these double teams, right? What happens if a team is not putting the ball in the air and they're running directly at you? How do you handle that? I think that's going to be more about the scheme of the defense versus the ability. But make no mistakes about it. If you look at the data, the analytics, the content, context, Micah Parsons is performing throughout the entirety of the season, and he's only missed one NFL game. You got to knock on wood. Right. So you got to give him a little bit of a premium for that, man. So it's your boy, Jay Tuck. Keep the comments below. Let me know what other videos you want to see. I'm going to dive into all the videos in the community tab. But I'm also going to dive into videos in the comments. We got a lot of content that we need to bang out as we get geared up for camp. But listen, y'all, don't let these people manipulate y'all. Don't let them lie to y'all. It's lion season. They're going to be out there in camp. They're going to be out there in tents, lying their ass off. Right, keep your eyes on the hips, not the ball, stay low, and don't get bit, man. So I appreciate each and every one of you. Comment, like, subscribe, follow me on all social media platforms at JTuck151. I want everyone to stay safe, stay blessed, stay encouraged. And can we stop lying on the lion? Peace. <laughs>